What if we told you that under Kathleen Kennedy, the Lucasfilm Company studio uh, cesspit, whatever you want to call them, that they apparently set up a trap against one Gina Carano? And what if we told you that part of that trap was financially funded by the person making the Acolyte show coming out on Disney Plus, a former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein, one Leslie Headland. Well, folks, we don't have to tell you that here on this channel because that is what is alleged in the lawsuit that Gina Carano filed, funded by one Elon Musk. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gather round for one heck of a video today as we expose the corruption, allegedly, the rot, the dumpster fire that is Lucasfilm. And as we do so, folks, remember that we will be using the allegations made from the lawsuit that Gina Carano has filed against Lucasfilm. So this comes directly from that. We cannot confirm or validate these items simply because we don't have access to those documents, but we suspect that given the attorneys have written this, that we'll be finding out much more about it. Now, we go to that parkplace.com where we believe this is the story, even beyond the other stuff that's happening with Disney, even beyond the earnings call. This, this reveals a level of depravity, if these allegations are true, that everybody out there should be appalled to be witnessing. And you might say, well, pro, why do we care? Why do, I mean, Gina Carano was fired years ago. What does it still matter? Let me explain, folks, that what they did to Gina Carano, if this is true, she doesn't hold the most conservative viewpoints in the world. It's not like she's some sort of political uh, flamethrower. Folks, if you're anywhere near the middle or beyond, consider whether or not this is how they feel about you. I'm not going to declare that is how they feel about you. You let that sink in and you think about, is this how you would be treated? And if it is, well, you should be incensed. This, an article out of uh, thatparkplace.com, still the headline as it should be, and it's by the astounding John F. Trent. Full disclosure, John Trent, who is the editor-in-chief at thatparkplace.com, is also mentioned in the lawsuit as one of the sources corroborating some information there or providing information. So just to be, uh, be aware of that. The acolyte showrunner Leslie Headland, accused of being part of Lucasfilm campaign targeting Gina Carano, was to participate in Struggle Session. This is going to get wild. Hang tight. Leslie Headland, the showrunner of the upcoming Star Wars Disney Plus series, The Acolyte, is accused of being part of the Lu Lucasfilm campaign targeting actress Gina Carano. Little background on Leslie, Leslie Headland. She is the former personal assistant to one Harvey Weinstein. She was hired at a time when one of our good contacts, script doctor, who's been on the channel before, says that Disney had essentially paused most of their hiring, uh, but she was picked up, her show was picked up by Kathleen Kennedy during that time, early on in the pandemic, for reasons that we don't understand, and we don't know, we'll let you try to uh, ascertain why that is, but apparently, Leslie Headland, uh, her career really blossomed under one of the biggest bullies on the planet, with connections to other major bullies. Island-going bullies, shall we say, and well, she seems to know how to bully real well. And it's not that it's not just that she's a part of this. We're get ready, folks. Hang tight. Let's read it. In Carano's newly filed lawsuit against the Walt Disney Company and Lucasfilm, her lawyer details how she was the victim of harassment. It specifically details that after she put the words "beep," "bop," and "boop" in her Twitter bio, she was subjected to long phone calls demanding an explanation and criticizing her for not embracing what some see as mandatory solidarity with a vocal element of a particular activist community. The lawsuit also details she was, quote, required, dot, 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 to meet with representatives of GLAAD, a national organization that promotes LGBTQ plus acceptance, something she willingly did, so of her own volition. After allegedly receiving positive feedback, the Walt Disney Company and Lucasfilm were not satisfied and, quote, continued to demand a public apology, dot, dot, dot. Defenders went so far as to try and convince Carano's publicist to force Carano to issue a statement admitting to mocking or insulting an entire group of people, which Carano had never done, end quote. Folks, I don't give legal advice, but here's a moral bit of advice for you. 
If someone asks you to admit to something that you did not do on grounds that you will probably deeply regret it from then on, I don't recommend that you do that. There might be some exceptions to that that I can I can theorize in my mind, but almost always, if someone asks you to admit to something that you didn't do, that's going to be a regretful thing if you if you commit to that. And so, in this case, uh, Gina Carano, I think wisely did not because had she admitted to it, they would have used that, and and she would have no real opportunity for what she's doing right now. The Walt Disney Company and Lucasfilm also, quote, rejected Carano's proposed alternate statement, end quote. And so they didn't want her to invent her own statement, which might have uh, validated in her own statement that she felt she had not done anything wrong and that she might actually care about all peoples. From there, quote, Carano went to donate to a GoFundMe page allegedly set up in support of said community. When she opened the link, she read that the fund was supposedly created by a Lucasfilm creative. Now, I want, listen to that, listen to that phrase again. Created by a Lucasfilm creative, not an executive, not uh, someone, not a cameraman, not a janitor, not a custodian, not, not a, a secretary, a creative, and was directly targeting Carano. In other words, she was asked by Lucasfilm, according to these allegations, to fund something that was directly attacking her, defaming her by accusing her of being a bigoted actress. Accordingly, Carano did not donate. Here's where this gets really dicey. The lawsuit that alleges Carano brought this to Lucasfilm, Lucasfilm's attention, and they denied, according to the allegations, and we assume there are documents, we'll see, who denied the GoFundMe account was established by any Lucasfilm employee. Now, how would Lucasfilm know that right off the bat? How would Lucasfilm know that? Unless Lucasfilm knew who had created it. That's the only way that you can rule that out, is if you literally know who created it. Shortly thereafter, the account was changed to call Carano, quote, ignorant, unquote, and the identity of the organizer was changed to no longer identify a Lucasfilm employee. Isn't it wonderful, though, that it seems that Gina Carano was smart enough to gather all of this information as it was happening? Boy, doesn't that stink when, when the person you're trying to take down is smart enough to collect all of those records and data. Doesn't it just stink when they know how to take screenshots? Doesn't it just stink when they know how to hit the record button? I don't know what all Gina has. I don't know what all tactics she used. But whenever you're in a situation, folks, where you think that somebody's trying to do you dirty, Hit that record button if it's legal in the situation in which you find yourself. It then reveals that Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy, and this is this is so good because if we ever get to discovery on this, and we're going to have a video out this weekend about that, you don't want to miss it. Kathleen Kennedy's right here in the middle of the muck. Kathleen Kennedy, the ringleader in the muck. I don't know. We'll see what we'll see what happens. Wanted Carano to join a struggle session on Zoom with her and forty-five other employees who identify as part of that community. But folks, I don't know how many employees Lucasfilm has, but 45 employees uh, who are part of that particular community seems uh, significant, doesn't it, to you? I don't know, again, what the total number of employees at Lucasfilm is, but that's, that's a significant number. The purpose of this struggle session, according to the lawsuit, was a litmus test to determine if she had the willingness to endure such harassment and humiliation. Wow. Wow. Uh, you know what? I think that Kathleen Kennedy should step into the octagon with Gina Carano, and let's find out if she has the willingness to endure uh, what would happen in the octagon. Wouldn't that be fun? The, isn't it interesting when you take a person out of one domain of power and put them into another domain of power and see how that, how that plays out? The group was described by her publicist as, quote, a friendly group that want Gina to succeed, unquote. However, multiple employees that were, taken, that were to take part in the struggle session had contributed to the GoFundMe campaign, including Leslie Headland. The lawsuit states, quote, several had contributed to the anti corona GoFundMe account, including filmmaker Leslie Headland, who was scheduled to produce a Star Wars production, end quote. And of course, Leslie Headland was handpicked by Kathleen Kennedy. She rose to power under the bully of all bullies, a sick and despicable man who sits in prison today and should be there 
It's only unfortunate that those who were clients of his bestie, apparently, have not also uh, found themselves uh, targets of the legal system. Interesting that. But Leslie Headland, of course, rising to power under said bully, now funding attacks against Gina Carano, a stronger woman than she. Now, here's where this all gets very, very interesting, folks. Was Leslie Headland the person who did this GoFundMe account? We don't know that. But we know that according to this allegation that Leslie Headland apparently was financially invested in the destruction of Gina Carano. How many other Lucasfilm employees were financially invested in the destruction of Gina Carano? How many uh, Lucasfilm employees would be financially invested in your destruction if you espoused any kind of view that's similar to the Gina Carano views that were expressed? And was Kathleen Kennedy also invested financially in the destruction of Gina Carano? We don't know, but that's why this lawsuit matters so much. And not only that, folks, but as things come out now, it makes one wonder just how poorly the acolyte will be received. It makes one wonder as the Mandalorian movie goes into production, will we get depositions and will we get testimony from people working on the Mandalorian movie, such as Pedro Pascal, John Favreau, Dave Filoni, and more? Will Kathleen Kennedy be exposed? And folks, we've got a lot more to talk about because in the lawsuit, we also found out that apparently somebody at Lucasfilm accidentally emailed Gina Carano, part of the plan to take her down with lies. Wow, this is going to get spicy. But for now, folks, Although this is not yet adjudicated, and so we cannot say for sure if it's true, the allegations are there. Gina Carano, we hope you have the documents. We shall see. But the allegation is that Leslie Headland, the showrunner of The Acolyte, coming out and touted by Bob Iger on the most recent earnings call, that she took a financial stance in the affirmative for damaging Gina Carano. But folks, this is how they feel about you. It's how they feel about me in my assessment. Take that as you will when you consider the hive of villainy and disgust that is Lucasfilm. Folks, that is the video for this afternoon, but we have so much more coming out. You want to be here as we continue to break out so much of the news that has happened about the Walt Disney Company in the last 48 hours, 72 hours. There is, I mean, we can't even keep up, but you know what? If anybody can, it's this channel, so stay tuned. All right, it's your turn now. Become an active participant in what we need you to do to give us the gigawatts to make more people see this video. Like, share, subscribe. And when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell. Drop a comment down below and let us know your thoughts. And boy, it's hard to be respectful, but we ask that you do so in the comments. I know this is insanity, incendiary, and it's uh, it's just it's flat out villainous, apparently, what was happening to Gina Carano. Disgusting, I say, disgusting. Happy, though, that ThatParkPlace.com and John Trent have been following this, and we will continue to do so as well, folks. We have a 60K subscriber celebration coming up. It'll be on Thursday of this coming week at four, no, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, folks, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Come join us for that 60K celebration. We're so pleased and so proud that so many of you have elected to join us. Only 13 months this channel has existed, and we are moving quickly towards that 100K mark, that milestone, and that's going to be a lot of fun. All right, that's where we've got to leave it for today. But 7.30 p.m., we'll have another video out. Hang tight. It also has to do with uh, Gina Carano, but uh, it's a very different kind of video, and you're going to want to see it. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing. And as always, and in spite of those who might wish to see you fail, keep having fun. This is Wilkin the Troll reporting for That's Park Place, and I'm surrounded by loving and adoring people who are peacefully trying to make sure that poor kids aren't cold in the winter. And just behind me, you can see a totally natural bonfire for making cookies or making marshmallows. Yeah, so, Wilson, we're, we really appreciate the effort and stuff, but uh, we're looking for real and, you know... Accurate news reporting on that park place. So not like most news outlets, huh? No. <laughs>